I'm Dr. Vanessa Sinclair, and this is Rendering Unconscious. My guest today is Dr. David Pavon Cuellar, Professor of Marxism, Social Psychology, and Psychoanalysis, and author of many books, including From the Conscious Interior to an Exterior Unconscious, and Lacan Discourse Event, New Psychoanalytic Approaches to Textual Interdeterminacy with Ian Parker. Today he's reading a paper called Coronavirus as a Symptom, a text he wrote for Lacan Salon in Vancouver. Rendering Unconscious is also a book. Rendering Unconscious, Psychoanalytic Perspectives, Politics, and Poetry. Available from Trapart Books, 2019. Now also available on iBook and Kindle. Please visit our publisher's website, www.trapart. Net. You can support the podcast by visiting our Patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash v-a-n-e-s-s-a two three c-a-r-l. Your support is greatly appreciated. For more information, you can visit my website, drvanessasinclair.net, or the podcast website, renderingunconscious.org. Links to everything can be found in the text accompanying this episode. It has become commonplace to say that the coronavirus pandemic has also been a pandemic of panic stress, anxiety, ignorance, selfishness, racism, hatred, and even loneliness. This diagnosis should not be underestimated. It is not just a metaphor. The metaphor is the coronavirus. The virus is like a Freudian condensation of the various personal and social experiences associated with the pandemic. These experiences have been assimilated into the viral agent that represents them metaphorically. The coronavirus is a metaphor for everything we are living through, suffering and fearing, just as gold is a metaphor for value, money, a sunburst, or the color of blonde hair. Just as blonde hair and richness could be symbolized by gold in a dream, so too the virus could now serve as a dream symbol of our fear and loneliness. It is as if what we are living has the form of a virus. The coronavirus becomes the metaphorical representation of our existence in the pandemic. We must understand well that we are what the virus means. With its metaphorical structure, the coronavirus is like a dream symbol, It is the condensed symptom of what we are, live, feel, and suffer. Each one suffers their own symptom. Each one has, as Lacan would say about the symptom, their own knowledge about oneself, their own enjoyment, jouissance of the unconscious, and their own opaque enjoyment of excluding meaning. In other words, each person has their own coronavirus. There are as many different coronaviruses as there are different subjects. We could classify them into structures, each structural configuration would then correspond to a particular manifestation of the viral agent as a symptom of our irreducibly unique existence. The phobic coronavirus causes us to panic and makes us avoid information about the pandemic. The obsessively neurotic coronavirus forces us to scrupulously maintain good sense and realism, 
to consult endlessly as to the numbers of infections and deaths, but also to take terribly protective measures against infection, as Lacan says when pretending to quote Freud. The perverse coronavirus gives us a good pretext with which to attack nurses, burn down sick houses, or prevent the installation of hospitals. The normopathic coronavirus leads us to take advantage of the situation by enriching ourselves through financial profit, either by speculating in the stock exchange, buying and reselling face masks, or increasing the prices of ventilators or disinfectant gel. The melancholic coronavirus comforts us with the certainty that the planet is finally beginning to get rid of something as depicable as us humans. The paranoid coronavirus makes us believe not in the news, but in conspiracy theories, as we think that confinement is a ploy to control us, or that the virus is either a biological weapon invented in laboratories or an effect of the fifth generation of mobile networks. Meanwhile, the hysterical virus alternately causes us to be suggestible, to sneeze, jump and sigh, to long for lost contacts or to console ourselves with computer screens, indulge in the spectacle of social networks, enjoy the pleasures of confinement and oscillate between boredom and desire, between love and heartbreak at a distance, and between despair and hope in the imminent revolution and the end of capitalism. The various coronavirus could be easily exemplified by the political leaders of the world and the great intellectuals who have spoken on the subject. Perhaps we have the right to have a little fun by thinking, for example, about the hysterical coronavirus of Zizek, the obsessive of Byung-Chul Khan, the paranoid of Agamben, and so on. It would be interesting to continue this but it is not the most important thing. What matters is that the various coronavirus have something in common. This commonality is, first, our shared existence in the capitalist world in which we live. It is, however, also capitalism itself, which unfolds in our existence and now in a symptomatic viral manifestation. It is here, in the capitalist system, where Marx discovered the notion of symptom that will later be applied in psychoanalysis, as Lacan has well noted. On the one hand, as a symptom of our existence in capitalism, the coronavirus is revealing to us our loneliness in alienation, that is, for Lacan, the only social symptom, the one of our proletarian condition, for which we do not have a speech to tie between us. On the other hand, as a symptom of the capitalist system, the virus itself is like a lens that reveals much of capitalism. These revelations include the devastation of nature that destroyed the ecosystem in which the viral agent was trapped the contempt for human life that has caused thousands of infections and deaths by not shooting factories and shops in time, and the inequality that opens a gap in each society between the lucky and the damned, between those who can confine themselves and those who must continue working, and between those who have and those who lack medical care, hospital beds, respirators, and other requirements for survival. Everything revealed by the coronavirus of capitalism, as I have called it elsewhere, must be heard. Real listening, as psychoanalysis teaches us, requires us to act accordingly. The resulting anti-capitalist action must leave Byung-Chul Han behind, avoid Agamben's wall, and reach the Zizekian hysterical point where the impossible is recognized. 
For the impossible to become the real that it could be, however, we must go further and follow Marx when he prescribes that we face, in a practical way, those problems that we cannot solve in theory. Thank you for listening to Rendering Unconscious. You've just heard a talk by Dr. David Pavon Cuellar a professor of Marxism, social psychology, and psychoanalysis in Mexico. For more, please visit the text accompanying this episode to find links, including to his article in Lacan Salon. Rendering Unconscious is also a book. Rendering Unconscious Psychoanalytic Perspectives, Politics, and Poetry, available from Trapart Books, 2019. Please visit our publisher's website, www.trapart.net. You can support the podcast by visiting our Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com forward slash v a n e s s a two three c a r l your support is greatly appreciated for more information you can visit my website dr vanessa sinclair dot net or the podcast website rendering unconscious dot org Next stop, 
find another name that and cripples the demon and joins didn't manifest itself. It isn't easy being human. Although we live longer and are helped along by technology and along with and most recently pharmaceuticals, we have no guarantee for either happiness or understanding of ourselves during a ranger and his while I am making a mirror. Something to see myself in. Where to look for guidance and insight? Well, there are lifestyle of a wife and two. Freud stated that we are ways to go.
red desert. Change the sound of the recording. Work with it until it sounds differently. That we could not afford to know him. The sun affects us by heat. Rebirth cycles. It direct tangible ways. We take the sun for granted and act the same. Adapt our lives and cultures around it. Bodies, the moon, the fact that the and timelessness and impurity. Relish magnetic force, quite a different story. Let me know what life with the moon regulates it, and the sea exposing ourselves began staging me, thereby controlling human destiny. Structures, minds, and supports. It is for Vanessa. Vanessa.